Try this. Well, I have a very froggy voice. So I guess I'm not. Wait, this is Daryl, do something. <laughs> How about that? Oh, much better. Oh, that's great. Okay. 
Anyway, so the carousel itself is, is um, currently being fabricated right now um, by two groups of people. One is um, a Jeff Briggs, who is a, a sculptor and an artist that resides in Newburyport. He is currently carving the actual characters that are going to go on the carousel and all the decorative elements that are going to be part of this, all of which will be custom designed and original to this carousel in Boston. The other component of the carousel itself is the frame, um, the mechanics, the tent. Um, that is being built by a company called Carousels and Carvings out of Marion, Ohio. Both of these two groups are sort of internationally known in terms of carousel fabrication, construction, operations, and whatnot. So that team is working at present right now to make the carousel itself. We are now looking as, as the major new contract on this project is um, for a company called Commodore Builders. They're the, the, com the contractor that will be building the site improvements that in which the carousel will be housed. And so we've just, um, maybe I'll just reverse the order of the contracts that are before you right now. What's before you now is a contract um, with Commodore Builders that we're recommending for an amount of 2.15 $2,150,000 um, to construct all of the site improvements. It's in, then that improvement includes all of the, the hardscape, the circulation. We need to create a flat platform um, because the carousel needs to have a flat surface in which to operate. Um, the circulation is going to be reworked on the site to match the circulation to the south and to the north. It currently does not. The landscape components of this, the signature element of this, um, sort of the distinctive feature is going to be a grove of trees, um, which you can kind of see in the rendering here. Uh, shade on the greenway and um, has been a major issue that we faced up and down the corridor. And there isn't anywhere on the greenway where there's a grove of trees. And this is um, a setting that often carousels in Europe you're finding, or even one in Bryant Park where you have trees um, offering sort of filter depth of sunlight, so people can, if they're queuing or if they're waiting, they're not in the hot baking sun, they want to get out in the sun, they can walk further south in the plaza area. Uh, the ticket booth, a new ticket booth will be built as part of this, and a new custom railing around the perimeter of the carousel. Currently what they use is kind of sort of even beneath Jersey barrier, the kind of things that slip out of place, and the surface around it is a piece of astroturf that people trip over. So. This is going to enable a, a really first quality, um, a much richer public experience than what's currently out there right now. So just to, if, if that's enough of an overview about the component pieces. So the one new contract is with Commodore Builders um, for $2,150,000. We went through a competitive procurement process to, um, to solicit bids. We've been through a very rigorous value engineering process with them, pre-construction services, working with the design team, and this amount is, uh, we feel, is fair um, and appropriate for the scale of the improvements that are being constructed there. Um, I don't know whether it's it's best, I think that you need to do votes individually on it, and then, I, so that's the one new contract, that, and, and then the two other contracts that are kind of companion pieces are, which I can go back to, to just so you get the, the overview is, there's um, a winter enclosure is being um, has always been included as part of the project scope. We have it, and, and it's a panelized system of transparent panels that wrap the carousel during the off-season months, which will be probably, I mean, we're hoping now to expand the carousel sees operating season so that for first night, um, it may go on a weekend operation mode and more into the colder months, but on first night it can be a component of that celebration. It'll be interior lit. It'll be a wonderful beacon on the greenway as opposed to, so it'll be a destination. And these panel, this panelized system um, will, will wrap the perimeter of the carousel to protect it during the winter off-season months, but it'll be interior lit, so often carousels in zoos or other places tend to be a little bit more on a perimeter or periphery of properties and so they, they get wrapped in, almost like shrouded in canvas in the off season and because there's no real back of house in the Greenway and it's such a high visible site that we're wanting to look great for seasons, um, where it's gonna be like a lantern effect um, with this panelized system which our staff will install um, right after the first, January 1st, and then and, uh, take it off and store it during the season when the carousel's operative. For that component of the project, um, we are, we have cho we've been wanting for the design of that to be refined further, and um, before we made an assignment of what was, would be the optimal contractor to fabricate the, fabricate the winter enclosure, 
originally we were thinking maybe the site improvements contractor would do that, but the more we've learned about it and, and refined the design, it needs to fit like a glove around the carousel frame. It needs to be structurally integrated because of wind loads and everything, and, and so the optimal person to do that work is Carousels and Carvings, who are the company we've engaged to build the carousel and frame in Ohio. So we've um, negotiated a contract with them to both uh, fabricate, refine the design of this, make sure all of the components are integrated well, to install it the very first time so our staff can watch and then pick it up as well as um, remove it uh, at the end of the season. And they are also developing a system um, of sort of a transport storage units which in which these panels will fit kind of like on a racking system that we can sorry that we can um, transport to and from the site because you want to you want we want them translucent so you can see through it does make them um, slightly more vulnerable to scratching and, and whatnot so you want to have a storage system that efficiently works to get the, get it to and from the site so our guys could do it and uh, carousels and carvings is, is um, they're such an operational op I mean they're just so good at operations and the nuts and bolts and what's let me literally and figuratively about how to assemble this what's the best mechanism for racking them um, how to s integrate it with the carousel that it, it was prudent we felt to supplement their contract for that system and that's just for just over um, two hundred thousand dollars to um, to do those those pieces of work and then the last item um, that we're coming for your uh, authorization is the necessary design services to um, refine the construction document package that was issued back in uh, July of 2012 when we wanted to get the process moving get bids in from contractors so we had a really hard number to know exactly what we were working with and what we had to fundraise for um, we, with with the completion, full completion of the capital campaign, um, and the expansion of the landscape scope enabled by that, the construction documents that were issued in June need to be updated. We want to have a, a fully um, current, uh, totally agreed upon set of documents upon which this con construction contractor, Commodore Builders, will be working off of. So there's no clouded you know, images and notes on an existing set, but there's a really clean set that it's just, you're, there's not gonna be issues of, um, I didn't really understand that. The other piece, and so to do that work, we are requesting um, a supplement to the Reed Hildebrand contract, who are the landscape designers, the prime design consultants that have designed the project from the beginning. They were the ones that produced the CDs. They're the, the right person to update them. The cost of that work is $23,500 because it really filters through sort of um, both groundscape improvements as well as landscaping to make sure that, that the, like the substructure is working right, the soils and, and everything work, and we have a really tight package. Then the other component is services that had always been intended but had never, they have not been released to do it, which is standard during a construction phase of a project. Um, the designer provides construction observation services they're processing shop drawings, change orders, they're on-site observation, they're checking materials, um, they're reviewing mock-ups, they're making sure that the work is being built in accordance with the contract documents. So that's a standard um, level of services. We had a, a, an estimate from that when we originally negotiated the contract with Reed Hildebrand and we've just been on hold pending completion of the design scope and going into construction before we authorize those services because now we're clear. So those are the sort of the three elements. One's new, two are supplements to existing contracts, and I'm happy to answer questions. Yes. Yes. Young's, Young's question was about is there a, um, are there vandalism provisions and, and did you ask about a warranty, Young, or is it just more? Warranty as well as the special design or against graffiti. We've worked really closely with our operations staff on that and with the design consultant as well as with carousels and carvings to look at different kinds of material. 
there was issues about, we started out thinking it would be glass, because you sort of first go there when you think translucent or transparent. Um, the weight of that, along with the, it's much more um, prone to some of the scratching and, and more difficult for graffiti removal. So we've really looked closely at this. Um, I know Bob Stigberg, who's not here, has been all over us on you know, um, locking me mechanisms, what kind of screws that can go in and can't be taken apart. Um, We've, we've tried to do, we have done the due diligence on making sure that it is vandal resistant. There's kind of nothing in an urban environment that's vandal proof, um, but we feel we've, we've done a really rigorous exercise just um, because we want to protect this at capital investment and believe it's the right system with the kinds of connection points in particular, which are they're really, really looking at that right now. Um, uh, in terms of warranty for both the carousel as well as the winter enclosure, we have a two-year warranty. Standard on most of these things is one, and we have requested two years. To expand on that, what about all the other masonry and other improvements that are, will possibly be done by Congo? The site improvement work is standard in the field for that is one year. Um, warranty on that, particularly on all plant material, but on masonry work as well. It, it would be very unusual to get a warranty beyond one year for the site work. That's why we're making sure it's sort of industrial strength design and it's going to be really withstanding um, wear, hard wear and tear. That's a great question. Yes? It's not a question, it's not a His question, um, what, what about such a wind tunnel? The question is about what about wind damage and, and susceptibility to that, which is a great question. Absolutely, which is why, um, part of why this is expensive as well, um, is because the need to withstand prevailing winds out there. We have a structural engineer that's been involved in the design of the carousel, involved in the winter enclosure because it's connection to the carousel, and um, we're more than aware of very strong wind loads, really on the entire Greenway. It's not. This isn't even one of the most windy sites. Others are worse than this, but um, it's tested just as sort of like, you know, the 100-year storm. We've done the same thing with the 100-year winds um, to make sure that it is, it is capable of withstanding that. The tent, the winter enclosure, and the carousel itself. Uh, uh, SGH is the engineering firm. They've had a lot of experience building in the Greenway Corridor, and um, yeah, we're on it. In, in hurricane force winds, you probably would take the tent down. We're talking with like what other communities do this uh, in Detroit. The Detroit Riverfront Conservancy has built a freestanding carousel that's not in a building, and it's very, very windy in that location. They've had a lot of storms coming off the river. They have yet to take it down. If there's warnings for a hurricane, the tent can come down. Um, but this, this is being designed really for hurricane force winds. Um, We'll just, you know, I, I should, our op staff will be on it and sort of paying attention if there's huge storms coming up and there's a whole bunch of components of, of issues up and down the greenway that we would need to, to um, take care of. More fun in a hurricane than a ride on <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You're riding on a lobster in the middle of a windstorm. How cool is that? <laughs> Knock that off your bucket list. <laughs> yeah. Steve, do you want to add anything? No, I, I mean I think I think obviously you know, a lot of a lot of design engineering has gone into this. I mean some of the things Linda hasn't talked about is this is on top of several ramps and you're over the slurry wall. Um, you know there's a lot there's a lot underneath this and that's been taken into account. It's been a lot of engineering. I think for the uh, the tent taking it down is the question. I think I think we we are preferring to leave it up in any event because you've got to get a lift in around this. You, it takes a while, quite a while to get it down. Um, so th there are those issues. It's really designed to stay up as much as possible. Okay. You know, so s snow load is an issue we had. We discussed uh, really early on about uh, canvas uh, wind and snow load on a tent fabric we don't have out there currently. We had a problem with uh, a couple art pieces with high winds. People might remember Botanica. Long may it wave. Um, so, you know, given that, we've been very sensitive to uh, wind blows. So that, that was a great discussion. Thanks. Yeah.
because this is permanent versus temporary, the temporary carousels clearly are not designed to withstand any kind of uh, wind operations. They have to, would have to immediately run and take it down. This is designed just to, to reinforce what Steve said, that this is going to be here permanently, and only a hugely unusual situation would require the tent to be dropped. And I think to, to tag on to the vandalism issue, we have that concern early on. The only things that have been vandalized on the temporary carousel have been the power lines going to it were stolen for the coffin while it was live. Um, but we haven't had vandalism, graffiti, or anything on the existing carousel, so that gives us, you know, somewhat heartens us that it won't happen here. But we'd recommend that we do anything we do there, we put in a graffiti coating on it so that if it were to happen, we can get it off easily. It's true. It's a flip side too. And then if you're someone wants to sleep inside or get in, you can see them. So it's it's sort of <laughs> back back and forth, which which is whatever. I mean, it's interesting because this is exactly the concern that the Parks Commission, who we just met with uh, on Monday evening, were asking about vandalism and security and. The nice thing is this is a really high availability site where there's people really around all four sides. There's a lot of ambient light, so it's going to be pretty obvious if someone's trying to make up for the lobster. <laughs> oh, God, don't print them. Um, it's, uh, I think that we're, we're fortunate because it is such a high visible location. I was just going to say that um, I know there's a, been a ton of staff work on this because we got the original gift. That was the good news, which was Big portion of the carousel. The other shoe that we quickly realized that we had on our foot, for analogy, was the sight one. And as Linda said very accurately, that's a huge challenge, and you want to make sure you do both properly, um, including the enclosure, because you know, it's a lot of money. You want to make sure it's protected. So, um, do, you, do we want to vote on these individually, or do we vote? Uh, I think we will vote on them individually because some are um, amendments to like the refill direct contract and some are the new contract. But before we do that, are there any more questions about the, the, the landscaping, the, the paving? The... I, I, get, I have a question. When um, are they going to start the construction? Assuming we get all the required approvals and authorization from you, we'd like to give a notice to proceed to the general contractor in um, February and as soon they'll do early mobilization work and as soon as they can work the ground in um, March Assuming we have no snowstorm or anything that that they'll get out there middle of March I think they're carrying a early NTP date of um, about 15th of March And this will all be fenced in? Yes, the construction site will be fenced in we've been before the city uh, Boston Transportation Department about sort of how the area will be managed and during construction and access and circulation um, so it's about a four-month construction process. And we're, we're aiming for a Labor Day opening. Um, and it, when we say that to people, people say, well, it should be ready before that, and maybe it should. Um, but we, we'd rather have it be a little ready before than to be you know, out there 1 a.m. before the opening. So we, we are aiming for the Labor Day opening. So keep Labor Day open in your, in your books and calendars. Um, it should be quite a festive. The critical path, just to reiterate, is the site improvement work, and we can't get out there till we can work on the ground. And um, so, as soon as they're out there, the carousel installation itself, which should be pretty amazing, because it's coming in on a whole lot of flatbed trucks, and there'll be characters and animals and decorative panels and tents all over. And, and uh, it's it's really after waiting for four months of construction, you see this amazing thing sort of show up on site and get all the animals tucked in their places on the carousel. Well, I think that's going to take only about two weeks. Two weeks, they say. To um, I mean, it's taken um, over 18 months to build, and certainly the carving part has been a labor of hours and hours and hours and hours of all the, the critters. I sort of have this vision of an old circus parade, you know, <laughs> police escort. <laughs> police escort. You know, the elephant leads the charge, and all the animals coming in. Wow. <laughs> Don't laugh. Okay. Well, no class. Okay, um, so are there any other questions before we move for votes on the contract? Okay, um, let's start with the biggie. Um, we have a vote to um, approve the um, Commodore Builders 
um, contract of $2,150,000. Um, may I have a motion to approve? Um, any further discussion on that contract? Okay. All the roll. Clinton Bench? Chris Bench? Yes. James Chan? Yes. Joe Perman? Chris Finchin? Yes. Bob Gore? Yes. Bill Griffiths? Yes. Maggie Marks? Yes. Suzanne Lavoie? Yes. Woody Lynn? Yes. Chris Manfredi? Yes. Georgia Murray? Yes. Young Clark? Yes. Jane Papalardo? Yes. John Craigman? Yes. Colleen Chin Shifty? Yes. Thank you. Um, the next vote will be um, for the supplemental contract with Carousel's Targets in Marion, Ohio, and that's for 203000 um, I have a motion to approve. Thank you. 